Well, this is one of the hunts I've talked about for a long time, an Arizona coos deer, rifle coos deer hunt. Jerry Pritchard and I have talked that we'd do this someday and someday, and yeah, sooner or later we'll get around to it. We actually hunted and spotted over 20 deer. We simply just picked a spot that looked likely and started glassing. And I can't tell you how important that is, is to use your optics and don't be intimidated by the land. Look at it, go find it, go find more of it. You can find animals, try it, and there's opportunity about. Good to see you. Yeah, good to be seen. Yes, everything went well, I take it, huh? Wasn't an hour like you thought it'd be. Mm -hmm. Jerry's whole family has treated me as if I'm one of their kids. And the feeling is pretty mutual when Jerry's at my family. Uh, we, we treat him like he's one of us. After Jerry's dad passed, he and I were on the phone and I said, Jerry, uh, what do you say we do that coos deer hunt this year? Jerry said, let's go do it. We have five days. We're in a place we've never been to. The first day we got here, jumped in the truck and headed way over to the north side of the unit. In, a, in exploration mode, we got the sun coming up. We climb up this steep hill here and clear all this foothill country so we can glass up further. See what we find. I've hunted Arizona a lot, but this little corner of Arizona, I've never been to. You think, oh, this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be this way, it's gonna be that way. And then you get here and it's completely different. We saw one coos deer, and I don't think we could even get any footage on it. It was so far away. The good thing you wasn't a great big one, huh? That'd been quite a hike. Ah, nothing for me of our talents. But I want to know. Huh? We'd have been there by now. That's true. Hey, Jer. Mm. We've been here for over three hours and we've found one little three by three already. I don't even know if he is that big. <laughs> well, it's going to pick up. People lied to me when they said that there were deer all over this place. Sitting here glassing for these little gray deer. <laughs> I, I wish I had some secret to it. What is it that your dad used to say when you didn't see any? He said, son, sometimes when you don't see them, that means they're not there. <laughs> I've been uh, friends with Randy Newberg for right around 54 years now. We uh, grew up together in Big Falls, Minnesota. I really value these times that I have with Randy. I know how busy he is, and we try to do something together every year. Not a coos deer here. It's a meal deer, but no white tails. That led us to reconsider where we were looking. But day one was also eliminating a lot of territory. Cross that off, cross this off. So with day one behind us, Jerry and I made the decision, all right, let's go way south. Let's try something completely different than what we tried yesterday. Well, the idea this morning was to go to this other spot, get the sun out of our back to some big basin. And we're here right at the perfect time. When you've never been to an area before, it's not like you can walk in in the dark. So you gotta wait till you have a little bit of daylight before you make your, your move. There's six cedar trees there and he's right in the middle of them. You got him, Randy? Yeah. It's a doe. Son of a Ah, oh, man, we need, we gotta see some horns here. That morning we saw 14, if I remember right, but no bucks. But what it showed us is the change in habitat, the change in elevation. To me, that's part of the learning experience, okay? They weren't down lower, go higher. We go higher and you see 14 deer. One of them sooner or later is gonna be a buck. Well, we're seeing some deer here this evening, but they are sticking really close and tight to the cover they're in. 
Hey, Jerry, you think we're going to see a buck today? I predict we'll see one, but it'll be too late to get him, but I think we're going to see one. I think we're nearing 20 deer today and still no bucks today. So good sign though. At least we well, at least we've seen some today. So tomorrow will be a better day. Just move in glass, move in glass. Try different habitat types, try different vegetation types, hike up these ridges and spend as much time as we can with the greatest vistas we can possibly get and just see what we can find. So that, that's kind of the strategy for the first two days. Tomorrow's another day. Yeah. One, 22, no bucks. 70. 20, 10 bucks is what's gonna happen tomorrow. 10 bucks tomorrow. 10. All right. Well, in this hunt, we still weren't seeing any bucks at the end of day two, so day three became a scouting day also. We've moved again to a completely different area. Uh, it looks like a really good area based on what we see here. But again, the same idea, we would hike up to a high point and just glass, glass, glass. It's a good looking country. And like a moron, I brought nothing to eat. Oh well, I'll live. Hiking our way up here, just slowly moving along, hunting, glassing and looking, and we started seeing quite a few deer. They're two really nice bucks, Randy. They're nice bucks. Both, there's another one. That's another buck. Not as big as these other two. Now uh, we actually saw four bucks early in the morning. Boy, they're look, acting like they got a place to go and we just kept after them and we tried to watch where they moved and we tried to watch where we were seeing most of the deer. Where were those deer going? Or are they just gonna stay on that mountain? I don't know. They weren't huge bucks, they were okay bucks. What it told us is the idea of continuing to move until we found the pockets of deer was the right thing to do. The other thing we could do if we wanted to, now that we've scoured this, is we could grab our belongings and hike a couple hundred feet more and be able to look down yeah, into that and We almost got to change the angle of what's happening here. Yeah. Uh, and that proved to be uh, beneficial because we started seeing even more deer uh, that afternoon. What's old saying? If you always do what you always done, you'll always get what you always got. Pretty nice one. He's looking straight downhill right now and I can see his antlers. They aren't that much. Really? They just come like to right here. Yeah, you wouldn't want to walk all the way over for that. No, he's walking downhill. Now, would you say the ones we've seen this morning were bigger than him? Yeah. Okay. I think I need to do is quit looking at this one and find a different one. I've already told Jerry since I've not shot one of these, if there's any buck in a reasonable situation, he's going to have to really do some talking to talk me out of it. I don't care if it's a little Sonoran Dick Dick. I don't care what it is. We're seeing lots of does. We've seen, I don't know, 20 some does today. Four small bucks way, way far away. We just need that lucky break where, whoo, there's a buck. There's one that is in a position we can get to him. Seen two right here. Does. Yeah, <sighs> by far the closest I've seen today. <sighs> So the only bucks we saw was a bachelor group. And they got the hell out of Dodge. Think they'll be back in here in the morning? I don't know. I don't know of a better place to come. I don't either. And by the end of day three, I think we had a pretty good idea that we were in a spot that we could spend the last two days of our hunt and have a really good likelihood that we're gonna find a, a buck that we wanna go after. It is the morning of day four, and uh, we're going to march up the hill, get up there, start glassing before the sun clears those clouds. Again, we're hunting our way up here. And we started seeing 
far more does, uh, probably 30, 30 to 40 does that day. We were seeing lots of one and a half and two and a half year old bucks. And it's not that either Jerry or I are really into shooting huge animals or got to have a certain score. Got a deer, it looks like a buck. But when you come here with a rifle, you still want to try and challenge yourself with a, a mature animal. Yeah, just lay down right there, buddy. I'm sure it's too early for him to lay down, but if he did, he'd be dead. I just don't know if he's going to bed before he rolls around to the other side. Well, there's a lot of deer out this morning. Oh, sure is. Is. They're both bucks. One's a two point and one's a three point. That buck is chasing the doe. This bigger buck? Really? He just ran after a doe and a fawn. Well, this guy's going to be way up there by the time he gets in his bed. He runs much further, I'll need a California tag. The top of that ridge is 800, and it's 1240 to where he's at. I'm in this wind, I'm not doing a 440 yard uphill crosswind shot. Something goes wrong, you're, you're kind of in a stock up there. <laughs> no, that's a very, very low percentage probability. We're gonna see what he does. And we're gonna give it about another hour or so. And if nothing else, we're gonna go up on that knob way up there and glass down into all of this. Cause we did see two other bucks here this morning. Well, Jer, right over there is where those bucks disappeared. They're in that basin somewhere. So if we get up on that knob, it's only about another three quarter mile hike over there. We we'll got the right angle. We'll be looking right down in them. Yeah. We know there are two bucks laying in the ditch down here. They just got to stand up. Jerry said we're about 20 minutes away from the, did you call it the witching the, the hour? The bewitching hour. Bewitching hour. That's when things have to happen. We're just nothing but looking. Fortunately for me, Jerry's the most diligent, patient, persistent person I've ever hunted with. I know you all have that one hunting friend where when you go with them, good weather, bad, thicker, thin, richer, poorer, sickness and in health. It's still fun. It is. That's Jerry Pritchard. It is. I can vouch for that. So Dale, he walks over there to look around. He comes back, he's like, there's a deer right underneath us. I'm thinking, that can't be. We've been sitting here for three hours. He's like, no, it's just a couple hundred yards right below. And I sneak around the bush right over here. And I'm like, whoa. Where? But the deer is looking straight up at us. He knows something's up. And off he goes and then he stops on the other side and I range it and it's 340. I can't get, I can't get rested. That one slipped through our fingers, but <laughs> I mean, who thinks you're gonna sit there and glass from this ledge all day long and right down below you in a cliff is gonna be a coos deer. What do you do? Well, each day it seems like we're getting progressively closer. At least you got to put the bead on one today. That's true. I did put a round in the chamber. Which is much ten, better. Ten more seconds, and we'd have been giving him the victory lap. <laughs> As we're walking out that night, all I'm thinking about is, all right, day five is our last day. We are going to make it work.
And so again, we hunt our way in from down where we park, walking in glass and walking in glass. And that's a big troop, Southwestern monkeys. I look way up the ridge, one of the highest ridges here, and in this little saddle, I see a deer. What's a nice buck. Oh jeez, yes. No, 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 that's easily the biggest one we've seen. That's a nice buck, Randy. By far the nicest buck we've seen since we've been here. Range and everything, okay, they're 1,200 yards away, that's not an option. Range and ridges I might be able to crawl to, okay. The closest I can probably get to, if I circle around that other side, I can maybe get to 400. What we should do is get me set up on them over here. Yeah, and we'll just go as fast as we can to get around. Even though it's a half mile this way, it's gonna be, by the time we make that big loop, it's gonna be a mile and a quarter, and we gotta gain about six or 700 feet of vertical. Uh, within about five, 10 minutes after Randy left, the deer decided to move the basin that we were in up over the top uh, so that I couldn't see them anymore. When you go out of their sight, they're also out of your sight. I'm gonna peek over the ridge, no deer. When we left, they were moving up and just about to the top of the ridge. They're not there right now. They go around, they got a wind coming this way. See if I can sneak around this side. We gotta get up high and around so that the deer we bump go that way and not this way. Dang it. Tough terrain to cover. So we stay behind the ridge line and we're just sneaking and looking, sneaking and looking. And we sneak into this one little pocket and there's, I don't know how many deer, but there's a lot of deer. And there's this buck, he was pretty heavy, but he wasn't the one we'd come up the ridge to get. And so we kept going and going and peeking over, peeking over. Finally, we get to this one ridge across out there about, I don't know, 175 yards, I see a doe. We just crossed the saddle and we're somewhat skylined. Just slightly low and left, there's two more. And all of them are looking right back at us. I'm like, no. There he is. Just went over, just went over. I'm getting loaded and the buck never slows down. He gets right to the ridge, but you know, no one, you're not gonna take a skyline shot. Hoping that they wouldn't see us. I got to this tree. He was the one we were looking for. He was the nice buck. He was that probably four and a half year old buck that we'd come here to challenge ourselves to find. From archery hunting these deer, one thing I do know is when they decide to move out, they don't just go over to the next ridge and stop like maybe a mule deer will. I've seen them run for a mile. I'm sorry, folks, I screwed it up. I, I don't know what to tell you. Dang, Gary, that was, I thought we were gonna get him. Well, you haven't caught a break yet. You've been close, but that was a nice, that was the biggest buck I think we've seen so far. Yeah, for sure. Tag filled or no tag filled, spending five days with one of the finest people I know, Jerry Pritchard, it, it's worth every minute of the time that, that we've spent out here together. Hey, Jer. Yes, sir. It's 2.47, the one hour peak period, the afternoon period has expired. I can't say as though I saw a new deer in that one hour period. <laughs> I saw that many new deer in that one hour period. Uh, another close call this morning. As of right now, it's looking pretty slim. I'm undeniably and admittedly the most spoiled hunter in America. <laughs> and you get to a certain point where it's not about filling tags. I mean, we could have filled a tag today. Uh, 
it's about the people that you get to spend the time with. Amen. And, and the memories and the storytelling and the chuckling and the... And seeing new landscapes. Uh, had some opportunities that were slam dunks but just weren't what we were looking for. We go home a little bit smarter for our effort and thankful for the opportunity with great friends in great places hunting and doing the things we love. Um, I don't know how many of you out there have had a friend for as long as 54 years. I'm lucky enough to have one. Spending time with a friend you've known for that long, best man at my wedding. So that, that's, that's what I value the most out of all these trips. Hunting is a glue that bonds those relationships. So I hope that you'll find somebody, you'll think about a place that you always wanted to go, and you'll go do it. We're blessed in so many ways. We're blessed with our friends, our family, public lands, the opportunity to go and do this. And uh, don't take it for granted. Go and do it, enjoy it, and share it with the people you love. I think tomorrow by noon, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna do an interview for the camera and just tell people how incompetent I am when it comes to finding buck coos deer. Jeremy, maybe it's because we're calling them by the wrong name. Cows and, we've been calling them cows and coos deer, so I don't know. Yeah, that I kind of switched the... over to coos just because it's a bad habit and I don't wanna upset the locals, and make it sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe we should go with coos because that's what everybody else uses when they get one. Yeah.